So we have the superintendent's diary. Umbilical cord. Yeah. Okay. So, with that, our only other real lead right now is room 106. Yeah, for the purposes of this LP, I am going to try to stick to the actual storyline thing they're trying to walk us through here as best I can. I at least know where everything is, so I'll have to do some cleanup afterwards, because the story doesn't walk you through all the apartments that do have things in them. So we have a first aid kit, thank you very much. It's a nurse's uniform. The name on it says Rachel. Nurse Rachel, where have we heard this before? Oh right, an incidental backstory character from Silent Hill 2. The nurse that was the caretaker of Mary Sunderland and also Laura. Yeah, it was really important that we'd had her here. See, this is where the references start to feel kind of intrusive in a way. So anyway, what we're supposed to do now is look at this. It says, my darling's number. And there are some numbers that look like a phone number. Will you press these numbers? So now we have a phone ringing somewhere in the apartment building. We have to try and track it down. Unfortunately, it seems it's also summoned victim ghosts. The annoying thing is the phone sounds like it's coming from everywhere. I don't know, maybe if you have surround sound set up, maybe it's some kind of surround sound puzzle that you can actually tell where it is in relation to you then, but uh, right now it just sounds like it's coming from everywhere at once, and it's kind of hard to track down. Fortunately, I know where it is. Unfortunately, answering the phone doesn't take the victim ghosts away. We need room 202. And I think I just went the wrong way. I think room 202 is actually this way. Yeah, the phone does sound louder here. I will give it that. 204. Victim ghost! Don't know how you missed me, but I won't complain. Room 202. And there's the phone. There's no one there. Well, of course not. We just called. But at least now, the phone has stopped ringing. So apparently, Mike is not really Rachel's love interest. That would be the person living here. Who, from the looks of it, seems to be an artist. There's a bunch of paintings set up here. By using the paintings we find in here, we're supposed to get an idea of some key places we need to go. It'll start to make more sense as we look at them. So let's see what we have here. It must be the guy who plays video games. The memo says, 205. He's always shut in his room. It looks like he has lots of weird interests. I heard he tape recorded Mike getting beaten up by Richard. So that's a key thing we need to know. This must be the superintendent. The memo says 105. Sunderland, the superintendent. Yes, that's right, we're getting bombarded with the references now. The superintendent is Frank Sunderland, James's father. Again, completely unnecessary, this reference. There was just no need for this one. But there it is anyway. The super mistakenly thought that Mike was Rachel's lover. It's a painting of a man holding a porno magazine? The memo says 301. That perverted stalker, he got what he deserved. Here we have a man with a gun. 101. A gun maniac. He's always coughing from his cat allergy. Richard Braintree. 207. Braintree, that, uh, yeah. He's always yelling at kids, especially that weird one that hangs around. But he took Mike into his apartment and peeled his skin off, so he's my hero. Well, okay then. That's a bit extreme. It's a painting of a man drinking alcohol. 
203. He's so noisy. I wish he would stop all that drinking and fighting. We've got a lot of blank canvases here that aren't anything. A painting of a young man. 107. He listens to great music, but I feel sorry for him having to live under Braintree. Two adults and a lot of children. 206. How can they even sleep with so many noisy kids? Besides that, they have to live next to Braintree. A man holding a brush. 202. Self-portrait. A painting of a nurse. 106. My beautiful darling. Lately she's been bothered by a stalker. Uh, the stalker being Mike, I assume. A painting of a plump woman. 204. She's always eating something, but I wish my girlfriend liked to cook like her. A painting of an old couple. 304. A nice, sweet old couple. Look at the painting, please. A painting of a woman holding a cat. 102. She loves cats too much and missed her chance to get married. I kind of felt sorry for her while she was mourning for one of her dead cats. And so, that's all we have going on in here. So we have a few leads. Mainly, they all seem to concern Richard Braintree. So what say we go check out his place? Off to room 207 with us. So that would be over this way. And I see dogs. The axe is a wonderful thing. It charges up so quickly, and it's got a lot of invincibility frames during the charge attack. The charge attack, as unwieldy as it looks, it actually does track the enemies fairly well. It's definitely one of the better melee weapons. So, yes. Room 207. This would be Richard's apartment. And it's a good one to come check out. Oh, hi there. Well, he vanished. I can see Eileen Galvin from here. I'm pretty sure that's room 303. What's she doing in this world? In here we find the gun Richard was using. We've got a revolver. Holds a maximum of six bullets, easy to use with moderate stopping power. Basically, it's stronger than the pistol, but holds fewer bullets, so it's a trade-off. There's men's bloody underwear and a torn shirt sleeve in the garbage. Is this the skin that was being talked about? Perhaps it's not quite as bad as we feared. And in here we have a putter. Powerful and easy to use, but looks like it could break easily. The bog standard for the golf clubs we've been finding. So with that out of the way, the next place we need to check out is room 205. This is the apartment of the one who recorded the skinning incident. So perhaps we can find something in here. A lot of video game machines lying around. And there's a cassette tape that says Skinned Mike. I could listen to it in the stereo in my room. So with that, we're pretty full of inventory, and we've got a ghost victim coming our way. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and make a quick trip upstairs to shove any more notes that we've got under the door.
that doll is staying right where it is. Okay, so let's see here. Just put that under there. And the torn paper. Okay then. One other room I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way that actually does have an item in it is this one, room 304. Just have to find where it is. I think it's in here. Pistol bullets. There's no real clue that you're supposed to find them in here. After all, this, according to the paintings, was the room of a sweet old couple. Right. So, since it lacks a victim ghost, I'm just going to use the hole that's down here in the lobby. Down we go. And back in the hole with us.